Hello everyone. Thank you for checking out today's video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you all a bit, a uh, bit of a deeper dive into the ServiceNow Condition Builder and also the Global Search. Now we did have the lists and filters video, but we didn't go that deep into the Condition Builder. I didn't show you how to save filters. Um, I also didn't go into the Global Search. So in this video, we'll just be doing a quick run through to show you all how to, to further set up your Condition Builder so you can reuse it in the future, and also how to use the Global Search. Okay, so let's go back over to the uh, the condition builder, and I'm back over on the all incident list. So let's go ahead and bring up our condition builder, and let's start building out a condition. So the one we did in the last episode was we did active is true, and we're updated this year. So let's look for something a little bit more complicated. So you can see over here we have this column service. Now what that means is that is the service that is associated with this incident. I actually added these afterwards. These weren't um, populated on the demo data, but I wanted to use them for, for testing purposes. So let's look for active is true. So again, we're just looking for the, the column or the field that we want to filter off of. And then we want to decide, do we want the next condition and this one both to have to be true for the records to show up or do we want or? So say we want active is true or the caller is uh, Bud Richmond. You know, if we want either or of those conditions to be true, then the records would show up for both of those. But for this one, we want both of the conditions to be true. So we'll hit and, and we're looking for service. So service is service now enterprise. Then we'll hit run. Looks like we got six records. Now that we have this filter, say this is the filter we're going to be using a lot, or maybe this is a filter we want to share with our team. Bring back up our condition builder and we'll hit save. And what that's going to do, it's going to allow us to save this filter so that if we were to come over to our list controls and filters, that would be available for us. If we select everyone, then everyone on the instance would be able to see that filter or group where we could specify a certain group that we want this filter to be available to. But there is another way that you can save this filter too. And let me remove it because um, I already had it set on there, but you could actually save this as a favorite. So if we were to hit that star and we select our incidents folder that we created in our favorites a few episodes ago, then let's go ahead and do open incidents service now. Serve, oh, actually we could probably put service is service now. Done. Let's navigate away over to our favorites. And then here is our favorite that we just created. Open incidents, service is service now. And you can see our condition is already set for us. So I actually have this set up on my own work instance. Uh, I do check, I'm, I'm the service now admin. So I do check when there are incidents of it, um, that have been assigned to the server or have specified the service now service, um, just to check to see that I didn't miss any. And uh, some that I maybe uh, got assigned to another admin who hasn't worked on them in a while. So it's it's helpful to have that set as a favorite so that I don't have to come back in and rebuild that filter every time. And we covered this in the last video, but there is a quicker way if you want to set that build um, that condition is you would just come over to I don't think we have active up right now, but we'll do it real quick. Okay, so now we have our active and our service. So all you gotta do is you would come over to that cell that you wanna filter off of. We wanted, we'll, we'll just rebuild what we just did before. We want active as true. So we'll right click the cell, one of the cells that says true, and we'll hit show matching. So now you can see our breadcrumb trail, active is true. And we'll come back over to service. And we also wanna see that the service is service now. So we'll hit show matching. And look, we got the same six records. So that's another way you can do it if you don't want to use the um, just the condition builder tool. Okay, so that pretty much does it for the condition builder. And the next thing that I'm going to show you guys is the global search. Now, this is your global search up here. Now, the main reason that you would use this is to probably find records. So say you use Microsoft Teams or Zoom or whatever. Um, chat service you guys use at your work, or maybe you got emailed a record number, oftentimes customers will not send you the link to the, the record. They're probably just going to send you the record number. So all you got to do is you just come over to this global search and you see, I copied this incident right here. When I put in that number, 
you'll see it populate here. You'll see an exact match. So then you could just find it that way. That's probably the easiest way to, uh, to find a record that was sent to you without a link. Or you can even search by keywords. So performance problems with Wi-Fi. Let's put that into the global search and we'll see if we get any hits. And it may take a while because it searches everything. Okay, and you can see off to the right, it's gonna tell us what tables the search, um, the search query pulled from, or the search query had results for. So you see there's a bunch of incident records that had some of those keywords in it, but the one that we wanted to see was the incident table, and that was the one that we just copied that short description from. And those would be the main uses um, for why you would want to use the global search. All right, guys, so that pretty much covers the condition builder in the global search. If you have any other questions, please feel free to comment down below and I'll be more than happy to answer. And please check for more videos soon. Thank you.